Welcome to another ABC Grab and Go On Demand webcast. In this webcast, we're going to cover the Cummings ISX regeneration process. Some of the key items we're going to cover in this webcast for the Cummings ISX engine will be the EGR or exhaust gas recirculation, DPS or diesel particulate filter, the VGT variable geometry turbocharger, the SCR selective catalyst reduction, and the 24 volt controls. The Cummins particulate filter consists of four sections. An inlet, a diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC, a DPF or diesel particulate filter, and an outlet. Exhaust flows out of the engine and into the Cummins particulate filter. It passes through the DOC and then into the DPF where PM is collected on the walls of the DPF. The PM collected is then oxidized to remove it from the DPF. This is known as regeneration. When operating conditions maintain sufficient exhaust temperatures, the DPF is continually self-regenerating. This is known as passive regeneration and results in clean exhaust out of the tailpipe. On very infrequent occasions, an active self-regeneration is required to remove a buildup of PM in the DPF due to insufficient exhaust temperatures. The EGR cooler, shown in the picture below as number one, cools the exhaust gases flowing to the EGR valve. The EGR cooler is mounted above the exhaust manifold and supported by the EGR valve mounting bracket attached to the rocker housing. Because the EGR valve number two is mounted after the EGR cooler, the EGR cooler is subject to the same exhaust temperatures and pressures as the exhaust manifold. The EGR cooler has a coolant vent, number 3 in the picture below, near the exhaust inlet of the EGR cooler. This vent prevents air from being trapped in the cooler during coolant filling and engine operation by continuously flowing coolant to the top of the tank of the vehicle cooling system. Exhaust pressure in the exhaust manifold, which determines the position of the VGT or variable geometry turbo and the EGR valve is measured by an exhaust pressure sensor. To maximize the durability of the exhaust pressure sensor, the sensor does not mount directly into the exhaust manifold. The exhaust pressure sensor is connected by a tube to the exhaust manifold. The exhaust pressure sensor is located on the EGR cooler coolant outlet connection for additional cooling of the sensor. The after treatment diesel particulate filter DPF, system is used to reduce particulate emissions and is composed of six main components. After treatment inlet and after treatment diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC is number one. Number two, after treatment DPF, differential pressure sensor. Number three, after treatment DPF. Number four, after treatment outlet. Number five, after treatment exhaust gas temperature sensors. Number six, after treatment DPF temperature sensor interface module. Passive regeneration occurs when the exhaust temperature are naturally high enough to oxidize the soot collected in the after treatment DPF number one faster than the soot is collected. Passive regeneration typically occurs when the temperature of the after treatment DPF is above 601 degrees Fahrenheit. This occurs during highway driving or driving with heavy loads. Since passive regeneration occurs naturally, it is considered to be normal engine operation. No fuel is added to the exhaust stream during passive regeneration. Active regeneration occurs when the exhaust temperatures are not naturally high enough to oxidize the soot collected in the after treatment DPF faster than it is collected. Active regeneration requires assistance from the engine in order to increase the exhaust temperature. This is typically done by injecting a small amount of diesel fuel into the exhaust stream, called after treatment injection, which is then oxidized by the after treatment DOC. The oxidation of this additional fuel creates the heat needed to regenerate the after treatment DPF. For active regeneration to occur, the engine control module or ECM must detect that the after treatment DPF restriction has reached a specific limit. Once this limit is reached, the engine will alter its operation in order to create exhaust temperatures high enough to actively regenerate the after treatment DPF. Cummings engines are designed to maximize the use of passive self-regeneration. 
This occurs when operating conditions maintain sufficient exhaust temperatures, therefore enabling continuous oxidation of the PM. Passive self-regeneration is completely transparent to the operator and does not affect the operation of the performance. Stationary or park regeneration is the same as active regeneration, but takes place while the equipment is not being operated. It offers the equipment operator the option, if needed, of performing regeneration outside the normal duty cycle. Using this option may only be required in a very limited number of applications. In this slide, we're going to show you some of your common DPF symbols. Your first symbol, your DEF lamp, shown to the right. Next is your high exhaust temperature lamp. Underneath that, you have your DPF regeneration required lamp. You have your meal lamp. And then you have your DEF level indicator. The malfunction indicator lamp. Used on engines that are equipped with onboard diagnostics, or OBD, the engine control system monitors and reports malfunctions that impact the emissions control device. If the OBD detects such a malfunction, the onboard diagnostic system illuminates the mill to indicate that the engine needs to be serviced at the first available opportunity. The mill can be illuminated along with any of the engine indicator lamps. High exhaust system temperature or your HESS lamp, illuminates to indicate that high exhaust temperatures may exist due to after treatment regeneration. This is normal and does not signify the need for any kind of vehicle or engine service. When the lamp is illuminated, ensure that the exhaust pipe outlet is not directed at any combustible surface or material. After treatment diesel particulate filter lamp or DPF, indicates when illuminated or flashing that the after treatment or DPF requires regeneration. This is accomplished by the following. The van hole coach is equipped with a regeneration inhibit switch. Ensure that the switch is not in the inhibit position. Perform DPF regeneration by one of the following methods. Change to a more challenging duty cycle such as highway driving for at least 20 minutes or perform a park regen. Your DEF lamp. An illuminated DEF is an indication that the DEF level is low, 15% remaining. This can be corrected by refilling the DEF tank. A flashing DEF lamp indicates that the DEF level has fallen below a critical level, 10% remaining of DEF. This can be corrected by refilling the DEF tank. Please note, Van Hool recommends that DEF levels not fall below 20%. Allowing this to happen can cause fault codes. A flashing DEF lamp combined with an illuminated mill lamp indicates that the DEF level is critically low. A speed inducement of 55 miles per hour will be enacted the first time the ignition switch is cycled off then back on. The speed limit of 55 miles per hour will be suspended during pumping operations. Normal engine power and vehicle speed will be restored after the DEF tank has been refilled. If the engine has been shut down after the DEF tank has run dry, the stop engine lamp will also be illuminated, along with the flashing DEF lamp. A speed inducement of 25 miles per hour will be enacted the first time the ignition is switched off then back on. The speed limit of 25 miles per hour will be suspended during pumping operations. Normal engine power and vehicle speed will be restored after the DEF tank has been refilled. The After Treatment Diesel Particulate Filter DPF Lamp If regeneration is not performed in a timely manner after the DPF lamp is illuminated, the DPF lamp will begin to flash. This indicates a higher level of soot in the DPF. Change to a more challenging duty cycle such as highway driving for at least 20 minutes or perform a park regeneration. Regeneration Process Overview a message that may appear on your dashboard display is the symbol shown here. Your DPF regeneration required. There are two options to perform this regeneration. You have automatic regeneration, drive at highway speeds for a minimum of 20 minutes without dropping speed below 5 miles per hour. Or you can do stationary regeneration, which involves the following process noted in the slides below. Note, DPF lamp must be solid or flashing to perform a stationary regeneration. Before we take you through the stationary regeneration process, 
Let's get you familiar with the switches in the back of the coach. Location of the regeneration buttons are in your engine compartment, shown here. The first one being your force regeneration switch. Next to that you have your regeneration inhibit switch. Ensure your coach regeneration inhibit switch is not active. If it is active, push the switch. If that does not turn it off, turn your coach completely down, allow it to power completely off, then restart and that will deactivate your inhibit. Regeneration process for the Cummings engine. Some of your equipment conditions. Engine running temperature range of 175 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Parking brake on and wheels chalked. Transmission in neutral. HVAC system off. Press the force regeneration switch for at least 2 to 7 seconds. If regeneration is accepted, RPMs will rise until regeneration is complete. Note, prior to 2009 models, they had the regeneration switch inside the cab in the driver controls. Once regeneration process has begun, engine RPMs will increase to 1500. Observe vehicle and immediate surroundings during regeneration. Your regeneration process takes 20 to 40 minutes. When regeneration has been successful, the engine speed automatically returns to idling speed and the DPF regeneration symbol will turn off. If the DPF regeneration symbol reappears, the regeneration process has failed. In this case, ask for technical assistance. Warning! If an unsafe situation occurs, stop the regeneration process immediately by pushing the brake pedal or by switching off the engine. The regeneration process is also stopped if you momentarily press the regeneration inhibit switch. And this concludes another ABC Grab and Go On Demand webcast. For questions regarding this webcast, please contact ABC's Technical Service Department at 877-427-7278. Listen for the prompts for Coach Technical Support and select appropriate option. Support is available at this number 24-7.